really look like. And to present this session, we have with us William Tinka, President, Recruiting Daily. Let's welcome William with a huge round of applause. Come on, let's create some energy in the room. Let's let them know that something's happening here. So I'm bigger than my avatar. Um, this is going to be kind of an interesting session. I want y'all to kind of uh, give me a little bit of latitude. Um, because what I want to talk about is when you're in the moment of innovation, what does it look like? How can you tell that you're being innovative? And, and I'll tell you where it comes from. Years ago, I used to have a podcast that was on every day uh, for about five years. And I would ask HR leaders, what keeps you up at night? And well, what's funny is, first of all, I never had the same show twice, because HR has that much rich tapestry. So there's that. Second thing is, most HR leaders didn't think of what they were doing was, was innovative which is really, really interesting when you think about it. Like a marketing leader, you ask them what they're doing that's innovative, they'll tell you exactly what they think that is innovative, what they're doing that's innovative. But in HR, recruiting, like our onboarding process, is your onboarding process innovative? You ask an HR leader, they will, they'll tell you most of the time, it's like, eh. But if you dig into it, you find out some of the things that they're doing are so fascinating that they don't even know that they're being that innovative. So what we want to talk about today is a little bit of, of that and unpack that a little bit. So the first thing I want to do is show you some images. I want to talk a little bit about perspective. So I'm not going to tell you about the images. I just want you to look at them, OK? So I'm going to go through them rather fast, because I just want you to look at them, get a little visual taste. This is not Photoshop, by the way. None of these images, there's 12 of them. None of these are Photoshop images. This is actually an image with, that was created with a regular photographer, right? That's one of my favorites. <laughs> right? <laughs> We've all seen that one, right? That one, the way they hold the uh, sun in their hands. So the reason I wanted to show you those images, and the reason they're important is I want you to have a kind of a visual library in your head when you leave today. And I want you to understand kind of one of the most important parts of uh, innovation is the concept of perspective. Where are you coming from? How are you looking at something? If we look at these images, we could all kind of make, you know, we could all deconstruct it and see how they shot this in a way that made it look like she actually has her hand on top of the Golden Gate Bridge. But we know that that's not true. We know that they, they, she didn't do it. In HR, one of the things we have to do is we have to recognize that we are more innovative than we think. OK? And why this, this is important about perspective is one of the things I want to talk a little bit about is about the micro experiences that you have. Okay, little tiny things that happen inside of your world that happen that lead to innovation. All right, so on one level or another, all of us know the difference between macro and micro, right? Especially if you, you know, beginning economics class, you learn that macroeconomics is about this, microeconomics is about this. The important lesson for us in HR is that in macro, we look at a process like uh, recruiting, talent acquisition. So what is that in a macro sense? Well, in a macro sense, it's sourcing to onboarding, right? We have to find the talent. We have to market to the talent. We have to recruit. 
and go through all the process. We have to invite them or offer them a job. Then we have to accept them, set a start date, and then onboard them. That entire process is recruiting. Pretty much anywhere in the world, it's the same stuff. It's just recruiting. In macro, if I were to ask most town acquisition leaders, hey, where are you being innovative? They wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to tell me something specific because what's specific is micro. It's one little thing that they're doing. Yeah, we're recruiting our technical talent from GitHub. That's what we're doing. We're doing this one little bitty thing, or we've learned that most of our great engineers are coming out of Salesforce. Or where we're getting our best sales talent is from Oracle. Little bitty, one little bitty tiny thing, right? The one thing is micro. When we look at the one thing, we don't, we don't think that we're being innovative because we're just looking at it through a microscope. And we're looking at macro, we're standing back so far that the, the picture's bl blurry. Can't see it all. So what I'm going to tell you is that micro leads to macro in the sense that all of these tiny experiences, I just told you, we recruit from GitHub, our engineers are coming from Facebook, sales talent's coming from Oracle. Those things are what's innovative about your firm, about talent. It's the combination of all of those things. Okay. So the three Ps. This is completely made up by me, so you can attribute to no one other than me. There is actually a four Ps in marketing. Product, place, promotion, something else. I don't know. I've forgotten since business school. Thank you. Who said that? You get a star next to your name. I've forgotten most of that stuff that I learned in business school. Anyhow, in our world, the most important P's are the three P's, people, product, and process. So why these P's are important are real simple and probably self-evident, but let's go through it real quick. Most people that think that technology can solve their problems. Get a real quick show of hands. Can technology change? Can, can technology solve your problems? I appreciate you. Thank you. So technology, when laid on a bad process, so we'll go back to onboarding for a second because it's an easy process to attack. Take an onboarding process. If your onboarding process is shabby, right, it's broken, can technology actually fix that if your process is broken? And I would suggest to you that no, it can't because you're just going to put any type of technology, good or great or bad, and you put it on a faulty process, it's still going to not work. It's not working now. Technology is going to fix your process. It's a relationship between the three of these. You already know this. You already inherently know this in your mind that it's about my people, right? It's about what processes that we have or don't have, and it's about the product, the technology that we put on top of our processes. Right? How we train our people. Like all of these things are interrelated. But what's, what's wonderful is you can actually innovate in any of these three areas. Right? So we think of innovation typically, especially out in the expo area, we think of technology as our innovator. And it can be, but I would tell you, you also can innovate with people. You can innovate with process. And you can innovate with product. And the thing is, you have to look at yourself more frequently than you're probably comfortable with. Okay? So the relationship between the three of these. The tough one, okay, the bottom one is the right answer. Right? That's the easy one. Where you have great people, you have great process, whatever the process is in HR, and you have great product, fantastic technology on top of that. That's... That's pretty much the ultimate with all of us. But I would probably be remiss if I told you that anyone in HR, anywhere in the world, has all of those things perfect. Okay? That would be a lie. No company, no company in the world has all of their 
HR processes right. And that's unfortunate on some level, but it also, if we deal with it and we come to grips with it, we say, okay, well, you know what? It's not as bad as I think. I've probably got to put my focus somewhere. Where should I put my focus? Where is it broken the worst? Where do, I, where do I need to innovate now? And then the question after that becomes, is this a people problem? Is it a process problem? Or is it a product problem? Okay? Because don't just throw the technology at it and expect it to change, because it won't. It'll just highlight how broken it already is. So take a process like outplacement. Okay, we've decided to part ways. And now we're going in different directions. Whether or not we chose it or you chose it, doesn't really matter. We've decided to go in different directions. What is that process? What does that process look like? Right? Like I'll tell you about employer branding. It's a popular concept, right? Most people think employer branding is about recruiting and the brand that you have on Glassdoor or LinkedIn. Truth is, it's the brand that you have with all the people that touch your firm. You can only, as a human being, you can only touch a firm or company in one of three ways. You're either a candidate, an employee, or alumni. So how do you manage those relationships? So that person that's outplaced, okay, how do we treat them? How do we interact with them? What do, we, what do we do to stay in touch with them over the years? What if we want to bring them back? Right? So that idea of employer branding, that's just a simple idea. Like, it's a simple process. Most people just think of it in recruiting. They don't think of the employee experience, and they don't think of the alumni experience the same way that they think of the candidate experience. So on some level, it's important to think about the candidate experience because you want them to have a good time as they go through. Yep, check. Agreed. It's also important to treat your employees well and make sure that they have a good experience. It's also important, just as important, when we part ways that that experience is managed. That's a process. There might be some technology in there, too. In fact, I know a couple. And it's your people. It's changing a mindset. Because most people, and I'll just t talk about America because it's the only thing I know. But in America, when you leave a firm, you've left the village. You're no longer one of us. And, and that's like one of the dumbest things that ever could be because we're connected. You worked here, you chose to go do something else. You know what? I should be mad at that. I should embrace that and love that. Like, I'm happy for you. If you ever want to figure out who's a bad manager in your company, bad managers come in two flavors. People that are happy, that go on and do things outside of the area that they're in, and people that keep all of the really, really good people once they get them, and they keep them in one area. A good manager, if not a great manager, is someone that's happy. Like they, someone comes in and says, hey, I got a job at so-and-so, they're not angry. They're not upset. They're automatically filled with joy. Like, fantastic. Like, I'm so happy for you. You're going to learn all kinds of new stuff. This is amazing. Aren't you excited? Like, I'll figure out how to fill the position later. I just want to be happy for you now. That's a mindset. That's a people thing. And you either are that way or hardwired that way or you're not. So on some levels, you're either a good manager or you're not. You've got to know those people. You've got to have an understanding of those people. And take, again, I'm taking something micro like outplacement, and I'm going really deep into it. Because just our mindset, our people mindset, can change the outcome. Our process and the way that we treat those people can change the outcome. And yes, technology, I won't go into it as deep, but technology can also change the outcome there. Outplacement is a very old industry, kind of done like your grandfather did it. So there's a lot of SaaS technology now that's kind of come in and made it really, really fancy and interesting. So there is technology there, great technology, I would say. So how do you figure it out? How do you actually get to the place where you know where to innovate? 
the value chain of HR, from sourcing all the way to outplacement, all of those different places, learning, compensation, succession, performance, comp, benefits, payroll. How do I know what to figure, how do I know where to innovate? Well, the first thing you do is you say to yourself, this is a never ending process. Again, kind of an emotional reaction. I used to sell web design uh, in the late 90s when the web was very young. And I remember telling people when I would sell them websites, web development, this never ends. Just understand that this never ends. When you develop a website, it never ends. It's for anybody that's developing software or develops software in the room, they understand it never ends. It, t it continues forever. So this is HR. From sourcing to outplacement, it's the exact same thing. It never ends. You have to audit. You have to then figure out the results and refine it. And then you have to test it and put it back into the play. And then you have to audit again. Not right away. I tell people generally about six months, twice a year. If you can't handle, if you can't do that for whatever reason, then start on a cadence of every 18 months. Make it work for you. But look at every one of your micros in the value chain and say, I've got to look at people, product, process. And I've got to audit, I've got to refine, I've got to test it, and then I've got to put the new thing into play. So that's what you do. First of all, you correct the mindset of, okay, this is a never-ending process. I got it. Check. Now I have to do it, and I have to look at the entire value chain. Nothing's off limits. And I'm going to go literally into each one of these. You probably already have an intuitive feel for what's broken the most. Go there first. So if your succession planning is broken, which is broken most places, by the way. If your succession plan is broken, then go there, start that. Is this a people thing? Is it a process thing? Do we have the technology to do this correctly? That's where you start. Have some success. Go there first, audit the heck out of it. People, product, process. Then go through this, audit, refine, test, put the new thing into place, come back to it. Six months, nine months, 12 months, 18 months later, and say, okay, what did we learn? Last time we were here, this is what we did. Now what do we do? There's one question as you go back to work, hopefully, next week. When you go back to work that I want you to kind of, I want it etched. I wouldn't say tattoo it on your arm or anything, but you can, I guess. And it's all about innovation. This question, I want you to have it in the back of your brain every time you innovate, every time you think of auditing something. I want you to think about, okay, okay. if we weren't already doing it this way, how would we do it? And this works everywhere, I promise. It works in succession, it works in payroll, it works in pick a place in your HR department, onboarding, sourcing, whatever you want to call it. If we weren't doing it this way, how would we do it? And that's the question that starts you off down the path. Audit. People, product, process. People, product, process. And you know what? Don't be afraid to grade yourself out. Like, okay, this wasn't great. You know, or I don't have the right team. Like, oh my God, I thought this was the perfect team and it's not the perfect team. I don't have the perfect team in place. What do I do? Ask this question. I promise and you innovate. And you also find people that avoid this question. Now let's, really quickly, let's deal with kind of the darker side. When you audit and people don't want you to audit, they're gonna give you a lot of signals. Signals are, oh no, no, it's already great. No, we just bought technology. Oh, our pe team's fantastic. Push through that and audit anyhow, okay? Because everyone's gonna tell you that things are perfect, but until you audit it, you won't know, is this, is it perfect? 
you actually might find that, yeah, it's, pretty, it's actually pretty good. People brought, brought us, everything checks out. Pretty good. You also might find out, yeah, it isn't exactly what I thought it would be. And I need to innovate. And this is the first thing I want you to do. I want you to take this statement, and I want you to say it to yourself. My name is William Tinka. That is indeed correct. I am a resource to you, uh, even though I live in Arlington, Texas, half a planet away. Um, I'm on the internet. So if you need me, just reach out. Just let me know, and I'll, I'll try to answer your questions as best I can. Uh, I've been studying the intersection of HR and technology for 20 years, so I know where some of the bodies are buried, but not all of them. So I want to be a resource to you. And uh, without any further ado, I probably need to go to my next session. Is that correct? I think so. Maybe one question. Does anyone have a burning question that just has to get it off their mind? Nobody? No questions? You have a question. I know you have a question. No one has any questions? Good. First of all, second, second thing, thank you for coming today. Again, you have choices. I appreciate you being in the room. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being at the conference. And I'm going to go to my next session. Okay. Or not. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have a different idea? Did you have a different idea? Like to take any few questions. Nah. We could do Listen, that. Listen, if you, if you have a question, sometimes what happens in a session like this is a week later you have a question. <laughs> okay? That happens all the time. Send me an email. The slides will be available. So just send me an email or just reach out to me in whatever way you can, and I'll help out wherever, however I can. Thank you all. Fantastic. Thank you so much, William. Ladies and gentlemen, round of applause. Thank you so much.